Okay, so let's see how much you actually know about powers and exponents. Now, if you have a pretty good understanding of powers and exponents, this should be a very easy problem to figure out without the aid of a calculator. Let's go to take a look at the problem. We have four to the third power times four to the fifth power. What is this equal to? Well, we have a multiple choice question here. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer selection. So A is 4 squared, B is 4 to the 8th, C is 4 to the 15th, D is 16 to the 5th power, and E is 16 to the 8th power. All right, so once again, no calculator. But if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, no calculator, and this is a very easy problem, but it's also an easy problem to get confused. So don't worry if you get this wrong, I'll show you exactly what to do here. But again, four to the third times four to the fifth is equal to what? Well, let's go ahead and see the right answer. The correct answer is B, four to the eighth power. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of knowing how to multiply powers and exponents. So there's a basic rule that you learn typically in algebra about uh, multiplying powers and exponents, but we have rules about dividing powers and exponents and other rules as well. Uh, but these rules are not uh, that difficult. Matter of fact, they're downright easy. And uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so first things first. First, we already know the answer, right? So it's B, 4 to the 8th. So if you got this right again, great job. But let's uh, kind of look at some of these other choices here. So let's suppose someone was like, oh, I got to pass this test. You know, uh, bad things are going to happen if I don't uh, get at least a B on this exam. So I got to make sure I take a good guess. So let's just look at these choices here. So if you didn't really know what to do, for example, uh, 4 to the 15th. Well, maybe uh, what we do here is go 3 times 5. So that's 4 to the 15th. This makes sense. Uh, how about this over here? This might make sense as well. So it's like, well, maybe we go 4 times 4. That gives us 16. And then I add the exponents, 3 and 5, 6. That makes sense as well. 16 and, uh, to the 8th. Over here, 4 squared. Uh, you might be like, well, maybe we keep the 4s. Maybe we subtract and we end up some way with a 2. Uh, so it can be very confusing. So, you know, here, you said, you know, if you are a student and you face a problem like this and you're not going to get penalized for answering uh, the wrong question, always take a guess. Maybe your favorite uh, letter is D. Hey, that looks pretty good. You know, uh, you know, kind of go with it. But, you know, we want to do math in a more confident manner. So the only way to really get this right is to understand the actual properties involved here. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so we have our problem here, 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 5th. Uh, and, of course, I'm going to answer this in just one second. But a good way to approach a lot of problems in math that you're not sure. So let's, again, suppose you're this, uh, this student. You're like, all right, I don't know what to do. It's always a good idea to uh, see if you can come up with a simpler version of the problem. Okay, so instead of this, let's make this a little bit simpler. Maybe something like this, 2 squared times 2 to the 3rd. Because if we can figure out what's going on here, maybe we can detect some patterns. Well, we can apply those patterns to this problem, okay? Because here we are multiplying powers. So 2 squared times 2 to the third, what is this equal to? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. Okay, so 2 squared times 2 to the third power is the following. So 2 squared, this is, a, obviously this is a power. And what this means in mathematics is you take this number and multiply it by itself this many times. Now, this bottom number down here is called the base, B-A-S-E, base. And this top number up here is called the exponent. The entire thing is a power. So we're going to take 2. This means take 2 
and multiply by itself that many times. So this is 2 times 2. All right, so we're going to take uh, this answer, which is 2 times 2, and we're going to multiply it by this thing right here. So we have 2 to the third power. So this uh, means what? We'll take 2 and multiply it by itself 3 times. All right, so 2 times 2 times 2. So we have these 2s, 2 times 2 times these 3 2s. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is what? Well, how many 2s do we have here? Well, it looks like we have 5 2s. So uh, when you have the same number, uh, you're, you're repeating it over and over again, like uh, 2 times 2 times 2. In math, we have a much easier way to write this notation of a number uh, or an exponent or a, uh, excuse me, a variable that's repeat, basically re you're multiplying by it over and over again, just write it as a power, 2 to the third power. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Let's not write all these 2s. We have 5 2s, so uh, let's write it this way, 2 to the fifth power. So 2 squared times 2 to the third is equal to 2 to the fifth. All right, now just take a quick look at the problem. And matter of fact, let's go ahead and write the solution right here. And I want you to tell me, do you detect any possible patterns here? Okay, how do we get from the uh, question to the answer? Well, it kind of looks like maybe we added these exponents. Well, if that's what you're thinking, well, you are thinking correctly. All right, but let's take a look at another example. So we're like, hey, maybe we're onto something here. And uh, let's do this problem. How about seven squared times two cubed? All right, so uh, to kind of test our, our theory or our uh, hypothesis, we'll take seven squared, which means what? Take seven and multiply by itself two times. So seven times seven, and now we have uh, two cubed. So we're gonna take two and multiply it by itself uh, three times. But uh, what's going on here? Well, we have seven times seven times two times two times two. I'm not quite sure what to put here. It's not like we can do two to the fifth because we have two different numbers going on here. So we, do we like do uh, two to the fifth or maybe seven to the fifth? Well, here is the deal. Uh, in this particular problem, there's really nothing we can write as a power to express this. Okay, so in other words, this is as simple as it can go or at least you can express these, uh, this product of these two powers. So why is it that this particular problem we really can't simplify into a power, uh, but uh, over here, we we're actually able to do so, okay? And hopefully, you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, it's because this problem had a bunch of twos, all twos, and this one over here had a seven and two. Well, again, you are on the right track. Okay, so what we have here is an actual property in algebra, and I'm going to show you it right now. So don't let this scare you, but uh, basically this is one of, I have, I want to say about five different properties that you need to know about powers and exponents, and typically you learn this kind of in a more formal way in uh, like a first-year algebra course. Okay, so here is what this notation uh, means. Uh, don't be intimidated by this stuff. So a to the m. So this is just a power, okay? m is the exponent. It's any power that we want it to be. This could be like, again, 2 cubed or something like that. And uh, we're going to multiply that by another number to, let's say, to the um, uh, second, okay? So the property, the rule says a to the m times a to the n. So from a mathematical standpoint, what we're looking at here is, hey, we're multiplying two powers and the bases are the same, okay? So when you wanna multiply two powers and the bases are the same, these bottom numbers are the same, okay? Not different, like we just uh, saw in this previous example right here, okay? Well, the rule says, uh, all you have to do is simply add the exponents, all right? And that's it. So that's why the answer to this problem is 2 to the fifth power, which will be obviously 3 plus 2. All right, so that is the rule. And now uh, most of you are out there are saying, oh, now I know how to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and take that step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just don't you love the way I kind of sneak that in? Well, I have to stop this video because it's important to me. Now, why is it important to me? Uh, you know, for obvious, quite, it's an obvious answer, right? Well, yeah, of course, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you want to grow your channel as big as possible? Yes, but I'm trying to reach as many people as possible. You know, I follow, obviously, math news uh, pretty closely. 
And unfortunately, the trends are not good in terms of math proficiency, all right? But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, that has nothing to do with the ability of people to learn math, okay? And I think uh, what's going on, in my humble opinion, is that we are just saturated saturated by too much technology, okay? We're used to using our phones and just clicking and buttons and everything else. We're not really learning the principles and concepts, especially when it comes to mathematics strongly or rig rigorously or comprehensively, you know, I'm using all these lovely adjectives, enough, okay? So if you truly want to understand math, you got to get yourself into a really good course of instruction. And you got to put in the work, learn the concepts, learn, you know, um, you know, uh, really fully comprehend the material. You can't learn math in a little shortcut way. Anyways, I say all of that because I really am on a mission to try to make some sort of a little impact. But I need your help, and the best way to support my channel and uh, what I'm trying to do is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. All right, so let's get back to the rest of this problem. So now that we know this lovely little uh, principle or rule, technically we would call this a property of powers and exponents, and there's other ones. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll show you a few other ones here in a second, but let's finish this up. So now the rule again is if we're trying to multiply powers with, and the bases are the same, all we have to do is add the exponents. So let's take a look at our problem. Four times three, four to the third, excuse me, times four to the fifth. Are the bases the same? Indeed they are. So uh, all we have to do is add the exponents. So that would be three plus five, which of course is eight. And there you go. That is four to the eighth as our answer. Okay, let me show you a few other of these properties. I'm not going to get into them, but I will show you things that you have to know. All right, so a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. All right, so that is one. This is when we're multiplying powers. When you are dividing powers, a to the m uh, divided by a to the n. Now, again, we're dividing where the bases are the same. Okay, so if the bases aren't the same, this rule doesn't apply. So this is going to be a to the m minus n. We're going to subtract exponents. If you're taking a power, like a to the m, to an, another power, to like, uh, well, let me show you an example, like 2 to the third power time uh, to the fifth, okay? All we need to do is simply multiply the outside exponent to the inside exponent. So that's a to the m times n. And there's even, uh, even another variation of that rule, a to the m times b to the n to the c is equal to a to the mc times b to the nc. You can kind of see what's going on here. And uh, let me give you one last one uh, right now. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. Or, and actually, there's one more. a to the 0 is equal to what? Well, hopefully you said 1, Mr. U2 Math Man, and you would be correct. All right, now this looks like a lot of, you know, crazy algebra stuff. It's not difficult, right? So if you want to learn algebra, okay, if you want to kind of increase your math skills, don't let this stuff intimidate you, right? That is the, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're, don't stop your goals, whatever they might be, right? And a lot of you have particular goals where math is involved, right? I know because a lot of you reach out to our website, talk about like teacher certifications, you know, college entrance exams, you know, trade school entrance. It doesn't make a difference. If math is somewhere, you know, between you and your goal, learn the math. You definitely can. And uh, hopefully, you know, these little videos help, help you out. But if you are truly serious, about building yourself up, really having strong math skills. You got, you got to get yourself into a good course of instruction. For this kind of level of math, I would uh, recommend like my Algebra 1 course, Pre-Algebra or course, and or my Math Skills where you build a course for those of you that have been away from, uh, from math for a long time, a long time and want to start from the very basics and kind of build up from there. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math and adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.